As you can see, we have a variety of soil moisture sensor irrigation controllers. So what are soil moisture sensor controllers? Well, a soil moisture sensor irrigation controller is a device that allows or bypasses scheduled irrigation events um, depending on soil moisture content. And here you can see an add-on device with an irrigation timer. And over there by you is a soil moisture sensor. And beside that is a variety of different brands of soil moisture sensor irrigation controllers along with the sensors. And they come in different sizes and configurations depending on the manufacturer. But they all work with the sensor buried in the irrigated zone, in the irrigated area of your yard, which then senses soil moisture and stops irrigation or bypasses scheduled irrigation events if the soil is wetter than needed. So will a soil moisture sensor controller turn on my irrigation when the soil gets too dry? This controller here, as well as the other controllers that we have here, are known as bypass irrigation controllers, soil moisture sensor irrigation controllers, which means that the irrigation system will only turn on when it's the day and the time programmed into the time clock. So these soil moisture sensor irrigation controllers only bypass scheduled events. There are other types of controllers known as on-demand, which are used on golf courses, commercial sites, and so forth, and they can turn the system on between a low and a high soil moisture threshold, whereas these bypass controllers just have one threshold. If the moisture is above that threshold, then irrigation will not occur on the day and the time in the timer. If, it's, if the moisture is below that threshold, when it's the day and the time to irrigate, then the irrigation will occur. Will a soil moisture sensor controller work with any existing irrigation system? Yes. As you see here, there's a time clock or timer. As long as that time clock or timer is a 24-volt AC timer, and most of them are these days, uh, even older ones, then these add-on devices are made, like this one, are made to work with those timers. So they just add on and they're wired up to the timer. The sensor's buried in the yard and uh, you're ready to go. So how many sensors are needed in the landscape? It depends on the size of your yard, but for many of the yards that we have here in Florida, the small yards, we think one sensor is adequate for irrigation control. And that sensor would be buried in the drier part of the yard, the area that needs more water than the other areas, and then the other areas would follow that area. If I have an area of sunny turf and an area of shady ornamentals, can I manage these with one sensor? That's a case where you might want to use more than one soil moisture sensor for control in the yard. And some new products, like this one here, incorporate both timer capability and soil moisture sensor control. These older products, or the original bypass type controllers like this one here, come with just one sensor and are meant to control the whole irrigation system through one zone control. But these later products that incorporate, uh, that are replacement for timers and the soil moisture sensor can allow more than one zone irrigation control. So if you've got an area of turf grass versus a shady area of ornamentals, for example, you can control those two zones independently. And many of these devices, you can control every zone independently. So how deep would I install this? The sensor is going to be installed in the root zone of the plant that's, that's the irrigation control. So in the case of turf grass, we typically recommend about three inches as the insulation depth. In new landscapes where sod is just being installed, that's buried under the sod, but, but just one inch or so under the soil and then the sod right on top of that. In ornamentals, on the other hand, the root zone can be quite a bit deeper, so the sensor could be installed anywhere from 6 to 12 inches or even deeper for some deeper rooted plants. So we talked about threshold, but how do I set the threshold on the controller? That's a good question because the proper setting of the threshold is important to the functioning of the soil moisture sensor controller. Let me show you on this one. You can see that right now it's reading zero. So in the landscape what you would do is dump a bucket of water on the sensor, wait 24 hours, and Whatever that reading is, for example, this one's about 9%, then 
then that would be the threshold or slightly lower. And on the day and the time of the irrigation cycle, the way this is going to work is if the moisture content is measured at lower than 9%, then the irrigation system is going to run just like normal. Whereas if it's a rainy period and during the day and the time of the irrigation cycle, the soil moisture measures higher than 9%, then the soil moisture sensor irrigation controller is going to bypass that cycle, which means the irrigation system is not going to run because there's plenty of water in the soil. So these soil moisture sensors sound great. What's the payback period? It depends on the manufacturer. The cost of the soil moisture sensor controllers ranges from maybe about $150 to $400 or so, and then there's a the cost of installation, which would probably be $100 to $200, depending on your site. Um, payback period depends on water cost, but we've calculated at a moderate water cost, payback period is one to three years and closer probably to one year as utilities are increasing their water costs.